Hey everybody, what's up? My name's Lizzie. Welcome to my channel. I missed you all this week. If you're new to the channel, I used to film all week and work my job because I have a full-time job and I just couldn't do it anymore. I got burnt out. So it's been like four, three or four days since you've seen me guys. And thanks for hanging out and waiting um, for me to finish my work week. We are currently having a blizzard. So I don't know if I can go anywhere this weekend. So you might be seeing a lot of me in the next couple of days. Um, I haven't started my official roster yet for my therapy. So I'm just, that starts March 1st, by the way. Um, we're just kicking it and we're going to see what happens. Oh my God. That literally fell in my drink. But not enough. That it, like, <laughs> it was like... <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like not enough to get wet. That's weird. Pervert brains. My fault. <laughs> anyway, strengthen your gifts. Ooh, okay. So this, I feel like it's about a connection since I, my brains just went to a sexual place. Because <laughs> I really wasn't like even going there. And, and my inner pervert was like, hello, somebody's channeling your, this side of your brain. <laughs> And I'm like, hello, pay attention. <laughs> Focus on success just popped me too. So this could be focusing on success with like a business, um, an endeavor, a new project. Sorry, my hair's crazy again. I had it up in a hat and I just took it out because I didn't give a fuck. I didn't even brush it. I didn't even brush it. I don't care. That's the day. It's blizzard hair. Don't. Hair. <laughs> it, it's a horrible outside. Alright. Any more from this deck? We're getting that monster storm that's hidden everybody. Oh, we're getting it. Change tracks. So, yeah, I really feel like a lot of you are going in a new direction here. This could be about work. Sorry, by the way. My couch is very low, as you can tell from... The arm. I never got the legs. I decided to just go hippie and be zen. I kind of like being low. And who needs arms? I don't. I don't sit like this. I mean, I miss it. I'm not gonna. I'm talking. I have the sun propped up, but it's not. It's not screwed in. <laughs> Looks are deceiving. It's really funny when we drink around here. <laughs> they're like are you ever going to finish your couch I'm like no no <laughs> at this point I'm going to get a new couch but I'm having a hard time getting rid of it because my grandma gave it to me when she died I'm having a I can't let go I can't let go <laughs> I'm trying so I'm like figuring if I don't put the shit on there you know by spring I'll be ready I could give it to my dad to put it in his garage, but I gotta find a couch I like, which is harder than I thought. <laughs> I don't have kids. My place isn't that big. I don't need a ginormous sectional. You can move 26 different ways. I'm just like, that's stressful. There's so many pieces. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> Can I just have bean bags, please? Thank you. Forgive and forget. Uh oh, so I do feel like I'm leaving these up here because I feel like these three topics are the principle of this whole thing. Strengthen your gifts, change tracks, and forgive and forget. We got three topics on the table. This might be a therapy sesh. Who knows? I'm rolling with the punches. Let's see. Let's talk about some energies. By the way, my travel nook. Just put a bunch of decks in here. <laughs> and brought it over here so I could sit on the couch and be comfy. Because I'm lazy as fuck like that. Sometimes after working all week, I'm like... Just set myself up so I don't have to move. Great. <laughs> but 
Let's have a card. Okay. <laughs> For strengthen your gifts goes with turtle. Be joyful and trusting. Okay. The turtle is a very cosmic spiritual animal. So this is a lot of you um, might be having some, look, I'm going crazy with this moon and Venus and Jupiter. I, my body is tingling. I don't know what to do. I'm just, I'm just saying it how it is. Everything is direct. So if you're very spiritual, like the world is crazy as far as frequency and energy is why I'm permitting out. And I feel like a lot of spiritual people are feeling the need to, it's just overwhelming right now. But I feel like this is, um, you could be experiencing migraines, being very tired, like what is wrong with me? And not necessarily sick, but not feeling yourself. This happens in spiritual ascension um, and when you're transmuting and on a collective whole, this is where we're at spiritually. I feel it every, like it's hard to, my chest feels like I have a million pound weight on it, but it's not a health thing. It's a spiritual thing and you need to learn to separate that. When I was first learning that I was spiritual, I thought I was, you know, having all these weird medical things and like not understanding that when you process spirituality it does have a, a physical effect on you and if you're an empath and some are, someone around you isn't feeling well you can feel those symptoms and if you don't know that you're an empath you could just think like why am I weirdly feeling sick randomly you know what I mean so you could be experiencing these things and um it's because you're strengthening your your gifts you're becoming more in tune to who you are and if it's not like a spiritual level this is like you finally showing yourself and doing different things and for like the people who hide themselves or have done the one thing for a long time and now they're doing something else this is like a shift with this leading into the change tracks it's like you have a glow about you you have a different aura not only within yourself and how you're feeling good bad or indifferent you're just either feeling off and not understanding why or you're feeling off because you're going through something spiritually or people are like off put it not it doesn't have to be like bad off putting it could be like whoa <laughs> like whoa whoa i did not expect this thing like a, a turnabout if you will like huh <laughs> like one of those i don't know how to explain it i just feel like let's see the shine on the turtles hear the plows if you can i'm sorry we're, we're getting hit hard i have to keep going through but um It's like carrying a purpose on your back. It's like maybe you're realizing the importance of yourself, your gifts, or something that you're supposed to do. What's the energy for change tracks? Raven, prepare for change. Yeah, <laughs> change tracks. And you got literally the raven, which is like fut futuristic um, or something you could have envisioned. This could be something you've been manifesting, um, something you have a psychic ability about. Raven is very psychic energy. Um, <laughs> the best way, and not everybody saw Game of Thrones, but think about what the Raven was in that show. It's exactly what the spiritual sense of a Raven is, seeing the higher perspective miles ahead seeing the enemy before they come in a spiritual sense, seeing love before it comes in a spiritual sense, as in seeing someone in your dream, having a sense or a feeling, um, or literally getting prophetic visions, dreams, senses, emotions about something that's coming. And I feel like this is on the collective whole. Again, I've been feeling this for a long time. I know a lot of readers have been feeling this as well. Something... It's so hard to just, 
I don't know what to do here, even in myself, and I feel like I'm talking to the spiritual community because there's so much of a level of fear of, you know, you gotta be careful of the watchers <laughs> with this raven card, and I feel like I uh, I'm not really going to get into it because I feel like the people who are very spiritual know exactly what the Watchers are and exactly what time we are stepping into and how fucking scared you should be. And that's why I don't talk about it. I'm not out here to stress people out. I'm not out here to put panic. And I don't have something to say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. This is exactly what's going to happen because I don't know what the thing is. I've only seen the outcome of it. The long-term perspective of it. Because that's what kind of visionary I am. I see miles ahead. Someone else out there in the world is seeing right now. I don't have that chunk. Minds are supposed to meet. Yeah, I said post that. I make, I make up words <laughs> on this channel, BT dubs. <laughs> um, I am educated. I just prefer at all times to be my authentic fucking self, like a boss. And I would say sorry, but I'm not. Take me as I am. And if you don't, I still wish you well. And I accept you. I'm just saying, I'm a kook. I know. You're either with me or you're not. I'm not, I'm not forcing, I'm not like dragging you onto my wagon. I really just want to get this off my chest. So many people are speaking about it and I do want to, but listen to what I just said. <laughs> I saw, and I need to shut up. <laughs> Let's go into the forgive and forget. Guinea pig, do your part to illuminate the universe. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> so scary. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to talk about it. They're making me. Um, Archangel Mary. <laughs> all comes back together. No, I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> what did I see? It's not like I've seen this all in one dream or even in one year. I've kind of had snippets of this my whole life, but it never made sense. I have a very descriptive, very specific dream. I was like three or four, and that's gonna sound so fucking ridiculous. I don't, <laughs> it feels so real like a memory, but it can't be real because of what we were doing. But then you dig into all the spiritual stuff and like I went down a rabbit hole learning about Atlantis and like where Atlantis was and the whole prophetic idea of it being in the sky and then having dreams and like kind of makes you crazy so I shoved it under a rock for years. But this is, I call it a dream because how else do you describe it to people? I was riding on a fucking cloud with like a lady. I can't even describe what she looked like because I don't think she was human <laughs> at all. It was just like a light, like a... <laughs> like a just, like a be. I'm not saying it was a God. I knew it wasn't God. Like I feel like <laughs> God would be like, if it was like a burning bush, you would like know who God was. This was not... Well, I'm not saying, like, I was riding on a cloud with Jesus or God. No, <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. I went to church at no point do I feel like I have I have died before and I, I wouldn't say that I met Jesus or God, you know what I mean? But this thing is so distinctive, she feels like home. And I just keep hearing Venus. 
<laughs> That's so weird, but that I always associated this. But Venus is an aura of like a, a sense of love or the energy of love. And that's exactly, I feel like she was my mother. But I have a mother who birthed me. Like if my mother is spiritual like me, was that my mother's higher self? Why do I have that memory? Was my mom and I meeting in the 5D floating in a cloud? I don't get it. Like, but I never really ever bought on, bought the, like, I, I know it wasn't my mom, like my mom here, but I feel like that was my mom. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. I was like three or four. I never saw this lady again. Never, like, I don't even know what we were doing. We were just floating around and she was just like showing me stuff and I, I don't remember. Look, I saw myself looking down, but I didn't see what I was looking at. You know what I mean? I'm, it's like I was watching myself with a lady. I was like three or four, but I've been having the dream since three or four. It, I don't know. I don't get it. But I feel like other, this is, you're going to get this too because you've had a dream like that and I feel like everybody who kind of I don't even I'm not an alien I was born here <laughs> I don't I say alien in a joking sense like I'm an alien because I don't feel like I belong here and I don't and I feel like in some cosmic sense I am not the same like it's very hard to be a scientist and a spiritual in the same brain. <laughs> they just... I don't know. My spiritual sense goes on this investigative detective work. And, you know, I dig into the, all, all the spiritual aspects. And then I go into the logical sense. And I look at history and I look at science and plausibility and what is factual and what can actually happen and what is coincidence and what is created hysteria like I am a very intelligent person I'm telling you I'm not exactly human <laughs> but there it's not like I'm the only one on the planet that's like that every single person has evidence of it I want to know why. Why aren't we all the same species as the caveman or the Romans or biblical times or King Tut? There's all these jumps and DNA splices. And with it comes an advancement to humanity. Where are the splices coming from? Because if you look at an organism or bacteria or a disease, there's always a cause and effect, a feeding, something that helps it grow and evolve. And there's always like a catalyst or some sort of weakness even if you, there doesn't seem to be a weakness, you just haven't discovered the weakness yet. Everything's strong and weak all in the same thing. And there's knowledge and power in all of that. That's how we fight disease. That's how we fight illness. That's how we fight aging. <laughs> you know what I mean? How is our technology advancing? How is our DNA advancing? Why do, why do we have memories? Why do we have psychics? It's like a <laughs> Pandora's box and it's opening because it's the age of Aquarius and the truth comes to light and we are in the light of truth and I think a lot of these truths are going to be extremely hard to swallow. Like aliens isn't going to be such a foreign word. Everybody laughs and scoffs and still to this day, but the United States of America has a program called the Space Force. 
an Area 51. <laughs> like, yes, conspiracy theories are always going to be there, but there's always a truth behind them. And there really is always someone dug covering things up with dirt. Who's telling the truth? Nobody fucking knows because it's a Cracker Jack box of what the fuck. And I feel like on a cosmic spiritual level, this is what we're talking about today. What did you see? Burning. Earthquakes. The earth ripping apart. Tsunamis. Bees are gone. There's no birds in the sky. Nothing is growing. People starve. Locusts. Rivers drying up within one summer season. Blisters and boils on the skin because there's no protection from the sun. And that's just earth stuff and like not getting too much into it. And no, it's not all in my lifetime either. I'm going to pause for a second, but I'm going to be talking to the people who have seen Chunks. Because let me tell you, I went a whole, probably three weeks of anxiety attacks and coming home and just crying. And it's like seeing... Remember that, how can I describe this, like, people mash songs up together, let's mash movies, <laughs> um, like 2012 meets San Andreas meets Volcano meets The Happening meets Signs. meets War of the Worlds. Meets The Stand. Environmental, biochemical, atmospheric, galactic, If you ain't gonna burn, starve, die in war, you're gonna suffocate, or freeze, or have no, we're just gonna fizzle out because there's gonna be no water, no food. I still don't know what causes it. Sometimes I feel like it's nuclear. Sometimes I just feel like it's just global warming. But isn't that the truth of it? We still don't have a fucking answer. <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm not pausing. <sighs> Struggle is real. You either think I'm a kook and are watching or you don't. Because I don't care anymore. Clock's fucking ticking. I don't really care if you believe me or not because I'm 38. By the time I'm 58, you won't have to question whether I'm telling the truth or not. We got purity. Yeah, they always give us a chance. They do it in the quiet of ways. The quietest of ways. Think about all the whatever religious 
reconciliation you have, there's always some kind of story or symbolism that tells of somebody that everybody cast it out or was invisible and they did something because they were invisible or because they were casted out and it changed something. The unexpected. That's what the visionaries are. The chance to save as many or as much as we can. Is it too late to save the earth? I don't fucking think so. Look at all those beautiful trees but the salsa talks about snow and the season we're in now this massive fucking storm hitting get used to this shit man I don't want to scare you but you know hurricane season earthquakes it's just amping it's just getting harder it's like a pulse this is the earth right now pulsing is what's going to happen. Bigger and bigger effect until there is nowhere on this earth that you can hide without an effect. I mean, in Syracuse, all we're really affected by is blizzards. Sometimes we get flooding, but we're high elevation too, so it drops. We're kind of in a really cool place to live as far as we don't get affected by hurricanes. We're too far from the ocean. We don't have tornadoes. Our elevation is too... I mean, every once in a while we get tornadoes here and there, but they just don't have a, a good enough track, really, because we're hilly. But there's a lot of places in my country that are flat that, you know, on the coast that are just kind of getting out. Like, you need to prepare. You need to fucking prepare. Like, this is... You need to doomsday fucking prep. And I know people scoff and think that's ridiculous. But... You... I don't... Me too. Because, like, if the world ended tomorrow, I would be fucked. <laughs> I could survive for a little bit. I'm a survivor. But I can't grow food. I'm... First of all, I love animals... Can you picture me hunting? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry. <laughs> I gotta eat too. <laughs> and the wood's crying. You know, I'm a sissy pants as far as that. Like, I haven't had to fucking carnival myself. Like, I'm gonna kill this fucking squirrel and I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> I mean, eventually I'm gonna get to that point and just be out in the woods, like, eating a fucking squirrel off the steak plane all money and that'll be fine and normal but for right now I'm like you know prepare because what happens when we don't have running water hot water power heat electricity to run saving life equipment doctors need to go back old school and learn how to do procedures without lights and power in the fucking dark like combat surgeons have to learn I want a combat surgeon with me in the end of the world because that's the one that's going to save your motherfucking life because all these people in the hospital are used to technology and screens and robots. They could do it if they had to, but they're going to be rocky as fuck. Farmers will be all right. They can grow their own food. They don't really go to the doctors much anyway. <laughs> they, they are pretty much veterinarians as well to save money, you know. Befriend a fucking farmer, bro. I would. So in the end of the world, you can knock on the door and be like, can I live here with you? I will scoop the poop, man. I will be the pooper scooper. Start creating allies. Start learning about what plants heal. Start learning how to fish. Learning how to hunt. Learning how to plant. Learning how to, you know, scavenge. Learning how to fight. All these things in whatever situation. Like, we don't know what the the hell's going to happen. Everybody's getting snippets of it, but nobody's getting the full picture. And I really feel like it hasn't been decided on the what or if what. We always have the power to change the game. But that includes working together 
And look how hard we struggle to do that and just in one country. It doesn't matter what country I'm talking about. Every country struggles to meet on the same page about anything. And when crises happen, every, the first thing everybody's instinct is to blame and panic and hoard mass hysteria. You know, think about COVID and what everybody went nuts about. Now imagine the world with no power, no more jobs, money, papers out. It's kill or be killed. There's no more police. There's no more fire. There's no more doctors. There's no more nurses. There's no one to protect you. There's no right and wrong. There's no court to, you know, if someone comes in your house and shoots your husband in the face, wild west motherfuckers, what are you going to do? Because you know that's what the world's going to be when shit hits the fan because that's human beings in a panic. What are you going to do? That's what you need to think. And this is, isn't about classes. This isn't about what you have as far as money. You can prepare without buying a single thing. Just having the knowledge in your head is going to save your life. So just learning how to make a water filter and maybe practicing it once if you can afford one supply for something small just so you know how to do it if you have to keep that knowledge do it like once a year take it apart put it back together have the knowledge you don't have to store things and hoard things i mean that's always nice to have if you can afford to but knowledge is power knowledge is what saves your life in the end What are you going to do when you can't Google something? When you can't web, web MD something? When you can't call for help? These are luxuries and we're too attached. Security in reverse. I fucking shit you not. You're going to have to go back to the wild. We're going to have to go back to primitive fucking times. Whether it be a temporary thing. And the temporary could be up to a couple years. If, like, something global, ha like, imagine if we did have, like, sub-zero around the world, <laughs> we had permafrost. You know, we're going to have no power until permafrost is over. Doesn't mean it's forever, but, you know, maybe whatever happens, you can only have power in certain sections. I don't know, but there's going to be... We're not going to have power. We're not going to have the luxuries that we are attached to. Antibiotics, band-aids, showers, tampons, you know, all the things that we're like, when something happens and we're like, oh shit, what do we do? We don't have supplies for this. What are you going to do? What are we going to do as a collective whole? Miracles. I think... We as people and transformation, yes. No matter what happens or if nothing happens. Whether, if you have the potential to do it on a grand scale and keep up with it every year, great. But I wouldn't suggest hoarding food that's only going to go bad in a year and then you just, what, donate it at the end of the year and you're spending all that money, like, if you can afford to do that on a community level, like have a community shelter for your com like town, city, that would be excellent because no matter what happens, you always have that to rely on. Something that's run by solar or wind power, something that has its own septic system or something you can grow underground. Like if you have the means to do that, you know, you're only increasing your your odds. I wouldn't suggest going super crazy like it's going to happen tomorrow, but I wouldn't put it off like it isn't going to happen within this decade. Things are getting bad. But if we work together, if we prepare and realize that the earth is becoming a lot more active and less predictive, we need to prepare for that. We need to know what to do to prevent and to attack these forest fires faster, how to protect and help people in floods and tornadoes and tsunamis and hurricanes. Like we need to get better at preparation 
and not restoration. You know what I mean? Like if you if you are ahead of the game before the game even starts, you know, all the more you're going to save and all the more you're going to grow and prosper. Flexibility, yes. Be, be that kind of family or those kind of people that, like I said, put yourself in situations just to see what you would do and to keep it fresh in your mind. Like, I don't know, maybe for... A week of our lives we could all learn to not use our electronics can you go one week without using anything I mean I couldn't at work because my job depends on it but from the minute you walk out of work and you act like oh my god something's happened we don't have power we can't watch TV we have to cook our meal on a you know a little grill outside practice you can make it fun and not scary, like play a, a board game with some candles, have some hot dogs and hamburgers, do it one night a week. You don't have to do it for a whole week, but like slowly easing yourself and be, making that a normalcy um, for you, for your children is only going to... And again, this isn't always just to prepare for the end of the world, this is to prepare for things in your area, like if you live in a flood zone. Um, you could pack bags like all right kids um, we're always gonna have um, bags right by the front door you know and when they say we need to evacuate we're just gonna grab this bag so I want you to put clothes in it you know you and you can always have something like in the refrigerator if you have medicine always have something already bagged up that you can just grab you know have stuff on the go that if you need to get out and get out quickly you have it there and you can teach your kids like where you go if in your town or area if something happens to them or if you get separated like those kinds of things are great for every family to know whether you're preparing for what's to come or just preparing for what is happening in your area because spirit it doesn't have to be talking to spiritual people. They could just be talking to people like, listen, hurricanes are getting worse. Tornadoes are getting worse. Fires are getting worse. Maybe pick better places to invest building homes in. Um, and if you are building your home, make sure your insurances are great and make sure you have everything covered for every aspect of what can happen so that you don't ruin yourself by living in an area. Um, and if you can't move out of your area, the best thing to do for your family is to know your route. Have those bags packed. Make sure you have medicine on hand for, I would, if you have something serious like insulin, heart disease, if you can, if you have the means to, I know that um, narcotics like pain management and stuff like that, you can't go, like, I would try to always have a 90 day supply of any kind of like insulin anything that your life depends on if you can store it that long I would and again if you had the means to as a prepper always have 90 days to give yourself that room to find um, like they send you to safe zones or they or maybe your hospital in your town is late getting a shipment you know just prepare as best as you can and be flexible with what happens. Don't be so reliant on um, technologies, not just your phones, but like navigation. Learn how to read a paper map too. Teach your kids how to read a paper map. Teach your kids how to make a fire, not just use a lighter, you know? What else do we got? saint sinner we're all going to be judged we all have good and bad aspects and we all um it's going to be like an ebb and flow it's not like all this shit that i've seen is going to happen at once or even all in my lifetime like i'm just seeing disasters and possible outcomes i feel like and i feel like this is the the 
if we continue down a road of sinning, as in treating the planet bad, as in living in denial that anything could happen to the world, then, you know, we're going to corrupt and destroy this planet and it's going to fold in itself. But if we learn and we continue to get better at saving the planet and we get better at planning and prepping for things, then perhaps we're going to be saving a lot more than we're going to be destroying. Like you have to look at the positive. We can't stop bad things from happening. Maybe that's the point in everything that I'm seeing. Like we can't stop the inevitable, but we can save as many as we can. And we can prepare for as many outcomes as fucking possible to make sure that our species survives. Do we want our species to survive? Are we worthy of survival? If we are worthy of survival, then we are smart enough to prepare for survival in every aspect that we can. This is on a government-wise. The government should be planning for America and every alternative or every outcome, they should always have a stockpile, and they don't. They haven't been doing this. Nobody's got the money to do this anymore. During the Cold War, during, you know, the 60s, you know, there was a lot of stockpiling and a lot of bunkers built with just shit put in it by the government, and who's to say they still don't have that, but I do not... I can say without a doubt that this government could not and will not sustain its own people for even one whole year if we are completely cut off from all other borders like we don't we don't have what it takes to feed our own or to provide for our own we don't even make our, all of our own needed essentials we 100% are reliant on trade. So if anything happened and the world was cut off and you're expecting the government to have a plan in place and have supplies rushing into your towns, you're going to have a very slow, hungry death. They will save as many as they can but those that they do save will be the 1%. Do not count on leaders of churches, government, states, schools, even your family. <laughs> the head of like matriarch and patriarch don't count on them to include you in the end of times your life your survival is a hundred percent you your spouse and your kids that's it not your best friend not your neighbor not your parents not even your dog because you know what the truth of it is when shit goes down your kids are at school you're at work or you're all at home like husband wife and kids but you're not with the rest of your family you could be separated you could lose your whole family in one shot not that i would wish ever wish that on anyone i wouldn't but I'm, when shit goes down i'm saying you're either alone or with the co-workers or in your house or whoever you're with in that moment. Don't be reliant on places or people. Don't let your kids be reliant on you. Teach your kids to survive without you. That's how your kids will live. Because that might be the fucking outcome. We don't want to leave our kids. I'm going to teach my babies from the minute they can walk and talk. Look, mommy fucking loves you. <laughs> Not, I won't say fucking to my kid, obviously. Mommy loves you. Mommy will beat up this whole world for you. But if mommy's not here, you need to do it for you. You can always come to mommy. But if mommy's not here, this is what you do. Teach your kids that. I, by the time my kid is 16, 
you know, I'm always going to worry as a mother, of course. You know, there's guns. There's horrible fucking people in the world. But if my kid has a fighting fucking chance, my kid is getting out. My kid will not hesitate to throat punch you and jab you in the fucking eyeballs to save themselves and their friends. If you're a fucking pervert, they will cut your dick off and run. <laughs> my baby ain't gonna play. Because... I feel like every little kid should be like that. Every, I'm going fucking, this is Sparta. You can walk and talk, you're learning a weapon. You're learning how to use your fists and your feet and you're learning morals so that you don't just walk around beating asses. <laughs> but that's where we need to go back. Saint and sinner. Teach your kids, man to love and honor and respect all the kids in their class. But if a shooter comes into that fucking class, all the kids in the class should look at each other and be like, there's about 800 of us and one of that motherfucker. Get your shields. All of you, get in a circle. <laughs> like, this is Sparta, motherfuckers. I'd like, to, I'd like to see you shoot through nine rows of fucking shields. And their little legs tucked in. Because they're smaller than adults. This is the school I would run, motherfuckers. <laughs> Come in and all the kids would be like with a spear and a shield. Like, you want to fucking shoot me? Good luck. This is Sparta, motherfucker. <laughs> the shooter would run. <laughs> Send a memo to all their shooter friends. Don't fuck with this school. This is what we need to do. That's how the world, like, clearly we're not Wild West days and we're not, this is Sparta. But we're fucking close. You know, like, people think, oh, no, people have hearts. And no, no, they don't. I am so glad that you are living in your safe, gated neighborhoods with your little private schools. Because those are the only people that think that way about the world anymore. And I'm not making fun of you. I'm so happy for you. I wish the whole world lived in your bubble and that was real. And I'm glad that you aren't experiencing the horrible fucking things that the majority of the world is experiencing. And every place has an even worse version of it and an even worse version and even worse and it's just getting worse it's just getting horrible you know we're, we're gonna have to defend ourselves against a planet we're gonna have to defend ourselves against horrible people because the the worst of them all is our own government and not just our government but most world leaders Oh my god, Age of Aquarius, like I said, the truth coming out, man. The hippies coming out, but look at what is... I can't stomach people, like... Be careful. Be careful of celebrities. Be careful of even the music you listen to. Be careful of... Trust your vibes, if it... I turn the radio off sometimes when you can't. Mm -mm. Why do they play 9,000 sappy songs over and over and over and over and over and over through a fucking recession when there's nine new songs a day? And the, it's all the same subconscious message. They want people to commit suicide. I feel, and I know that fucking seems disgusting, but I live in a ghetto, okay? Well, actually, I live in a good part now, but I come from the ghetto. And in areas like mine, you got three choices in music. Rap, that's very angry, shooting them up because they're, like, I'm sick of people dying or shoot them in their face because the cops aren't doing nothing or fuck the police because they're killing us or, you know, <laughs> I 
not even worth talking about it anymore. Censorship is a big fucking problem. I just, I was gonna tell you and I heard shh. Don't. Watchers. This is about seeing with your third eye. Trusting those instincts. Seeing the truth. I'm not going to shove my opinions. But when you're sitting in your religious whatever you're doing. Or you're sitting in your political whatever you're doing for political reasons. Religious reasons. What your opinions are. Even what you're doing for a hobby. Listen to the message in what you're saying and what you're hearing. How are you feeling? What is the imprint of that moment on time? Because I tell you, that imprint does not match the truth. For example, like you go to a fundraiser, everybody dresses up. Normal fundraisers, you know, include a meal, free open bar, mingle. Sometimes you get to wear nice stuff or they give you swag bags. And you go in and it's shiny and it's decorated and oh, it's a moment. But everything in that swag bag is made by um, kids in child labor camps or um, some product in there says it has an FDA stamp on it and it really doesn't. You know what I mean? It's just like they're, they're always blinding you with shiny things so that you don't see the truth. Or they're cutting corners what, not, what they don't know won't hurt them like we're too stupid as a people, as a collective, to comprehend. And I think a lot of us do feel and see the truth, but our hearts don't match our, our knowledge. We don't want to believe that that is the truth. Because how fucking devastating. How devastating to know the true evil are the ones in charge. I mean, I don't really have much to worry about because I'm a little peon and they'll just label me as a conspiracy theorist, theorist or crazy, but like, be careful and speak your truth anyway. <laughs> like me, like, I think a lot of people like me and the spiritual connections are coming together maybe that's what the love thing I was feeling these are like power couples for humanity it seems like really dramatic but it's true it's like the couples that take that advice and they get together and they have this goal and that whole goal is to have a better future, to raise their kids to survive in any situation, to, re to prepare for their family to survive in any situation. And then all those families and what their perspective little spots, when shit goes down, they survive here, and they survive here, and they survive here, and they survive here, like Prometheus when the alien came down and dissolved his body into the river. It's like the same concept of I'm giving little pods of seeds for hope. <laughs> 
for humanity. It's like people meeting now, in the now, because remember what I said, this isn't all, the end of the world isn't going to happen in my lifetime. Majority of the real shit is going to be in my kids' time. That's why my, they're going to have to be five times as hard as me. Mission number one. You think I'm badass? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> My kids are going to crush it. <laughs> yeah, and so are all the kids like us. This is divine order. This is God's backup plan. This is God's contingency plan to make humanity work and survive. This is God, you know, not really planning for one outcome, but planning for them all. This family's going to plan for floods. This family's going to plan for fire. This plan's going to be for hurricanes. This plan's going to be for tornadoes. This plan's going to be for disease. This plan's going to be for aliens. There's going to be one family that makes it in every situation. All you need is two families, really, so that they can, well, you're going to have inbreeding eventually if you don't have at least 10 families to switch it off. But you know what I mean? I'm sure he's going to put more than one in every category. <laughs> so whatever outcome happens, wherever those people are, they can combine and procreate. This is spirit. This is what our purpose is. The planners. The birthers and the planners to be visionaries, to see what is coming, and to prepare for it. So your role, our role, is a lot more important than you would fucking think. Because although majority of the shit is not going to happen in our lifetime, the fate of what happens in the next one is up to us. Are we going to take it seriously so that our kids take it seriously so that they're prepared? Or are we going to treat it like a joke and leave our kids screwed? Because that's the decision on the table right now. This is the decision as a collective, spiritual or not, that we need to make. Are we going to let our kids fail? Or are they going to succeed us? Every single parent should be making their child a titan. Your kid is going to survive in 50 times worse conditions than you can imagine right now by the time they're your age that you are now. Prepare them. And while we're preparing them, we need to actively be changing it too. You know, our goal isn't just to be preparing and letting bad shit happen. It should be preparing and changing. Preparing is the contingency so that they survive. Fighting is for the better tomorrow. The better tomorrow should always be the focus, but the contingency plan should be just as important. Because at the end of the day, remember what I said. When, you ki when your kids don't have no one, and they're in that school, and something happens, whether it be something horrible coming into the school or on a world level. Make sure they have every bit of training that you can have accessible to them. To know what to do in a fire, in a shooter, in emergency, if their fucking teacher, God forbid, has a heart attack in the middle of the class... Please be the one fucking parent that teaches your kid how to, what to do when someone's in distress. Get up. Go get help. Somebody, you know, pick his head up. If the face is pale, lift the towel. If the face is red, lift the head. Something. No first aid. Prepare for everything so that when kids have no adults around, they will survive. 
because that might very much be a possibility in your kid's life, whether it be just a short term, like, God forbid, something comes into your child's school, you know, and they make it, they're only separated for a short time, but they need to survive in that short time to make it home to you. Make sure your kid knows how to make it home to you. And as many outcomes, but don't traumatize them. We need to be careful. We want to preserve their imagination. We want to preserve their innocence, but we want them to not to panic. How do we do this? <sighs> There's a lot of debates on, you know, I don't recommend the surprise mock shooter. I think that, um, you know, there's been a few shows that covered it, but the one I most recently watched, because I've been binging New Amsterdam for like two weeks now, but they did a whole episode on how a school, um, one student knew about it because that was going to be the one that was going to fake get shot. But anyway, they had like a movie prop bullet and blood and you know a fake shooter who's probably like a cop or something come in and shoot a kid in front of the class to, to scare them you know into thinking you know it was really happening and seeing how they would react and all the kids in the school had PTSD from it I mean that is extreme don't the point is yes kids this can happen but you don't need to make them experience it. We're trying to protect them from that feeling of flight or f fight or flight. But you need to let your kids know, like, listen, there's perverts in this world that might want to tr try to touch your parts. That's not okay. That's never okay. And you don't have to, like, they need to know these things without being <laughs> traumatized. And your every kid is different. You really got to know your kid. And, like, if they're scared of scary movies, if they're very sensitive and emotional, shock value is not going to be the way to go. Um, go about it like a lesson. Like, okay, let's learn the signs of a heart attack or what to do when someone is choking. Okay, let's learn what to do about hurricanes. This is what a hurricane is. Let's make a hurricane in a bottle or whatever. And okay, so when a hurricane happens, what are we going to do, kids? I, you can make it a learning experience without causing trauma. Just make sure that is a priority in your lesson. And on the other aspect, if you have teenagers... Teenagers are the reverse. <laughs> They're not going to respond to, woe is me, let's pack a bag, kids. Shock value does work well for teens, more in the sense of discipline, like scared straight, not with shooter drills. I, I feel like that's true for all ages. You just cause more PTSD on those kids. Whoever idea that was, was horrible. Horrible idea. I guess we don't need those. Shot clean across the room. Heart, home, compassion. Yes, this isn't... Okay, so we've talked about preparing your kids, preparing yourself for what can happen. But remember what I said, the contingency plan is survival. But the ultimate plan is saving the planet and saving humanity and learning to come back together to have that compassion. Remember those times when people didn't have to lock their doors, you know? When I was a kid, I had a neighborhood. We never locked our doors. Nobody got robbed, you know, as, even though we were a poor neighborhood. Like, it was a sense of community, and I don't know where that left. I kind of feel like it was when Yahoo and, like, chat rooms started coming, like, it didn't happen right away, but I feel like that was the beginning of it, the internet. It really, I mean, I can speak about it because I'm old. You know, I'm 38 years old. I have very firm and strong memories of not having TV and, like, being outside by and playing outside from sunup 
to bedtime and having fun and not being bored and like playing board games and going on road trips and having travel games and pl playing games by looking out the window. We didn't have movies. We didn't have gadgets in our hands. We were singing on the radio. You know, if we wanted to record something, you know, we had to be there to, to hear it live and press the record button like... If you weren't home to see something on TV, there was no pausing it or recording it for later. You missed it forever. There was no internet to go and see something. You either had to wait for the VHS or a rerun. You know, the world was extremely different than it is now. But people were so connected. Your your name, your, your everything about you was held into such a higher regard. Like, you had to mean what you said, and you had to say things to people's face, and you had to, you know, be in front of your peers. You had to be responsible for your actions and responsible for your words in a way this world does not know. These young people have no idea what it is to be authentic. We put so much pressure on these kids just by having the internet to be a certain way, to look a certain way, and they're getting on so many aspects, so many visuals, and it ends up making them feel like shit about themselves and adults too. It's like we have so much access that it's devastating. This is about coming home and just connecting to your community again, like back in the day when... You know, we had landlines. You know, we would call be like, hey, I'm coming over to play. Are you home? Yep. And we didn't, I mean, unless we were grounded, we didn't sit on the phone all day. We were outside playing, doing stuff. This is connecting to the heart space, protecting your home, protecting what you love, and protecting the future you want. We're just continually, we're continuously pulling away from each other. We're getting more distracted. We're spending more time away in our little homes or in our little cliques and we're, we're distancing. Social distance is still a thing. Do we want this in the future? Do we want the future to have no compassion? To not even notice the people around you? I'm guilty of it too. I look down when I walk. I don't look around me when I walk anymore. I, I've been noticing that. I don't want to look around me anymore. It's a, it's a lot of dark and nasty shit. A lot, of, and that's how the world is. We're just putting our head down, and we're just trying to get through it. And we're forgetting that we're all just trying to get through it, but we could be getting through it together. Myself too. Moon maiden, yeah. New beginnings are on the horizon. We might be forced to be connected. Maybe something will happen with the internet. And, you know, we aren't going to, maybe not forever. You know, there might be, you know, what if like a whole part of a country, you know, had a disaster and it wiped out all the towers or something. You know, there's, I just feel like there's going to be a change either a change in people's perspective of us really realizing that we're pulling away from each other and we need to come back. Um, and this is like new beginnings on um, having safer communities again and like getting a control on gun violence and just being angry and, you know, really dropping the hatchet. It could be that as well. With these two coming together, it could mean that in the future... That's where we're going if we work together. Let me get a clarifier. Where are we going with this? Good stuff. <laughs> oh my God, why is half the deck flying across the room? Adaptability. So yeah, be ready for new beginnings, good and bad. Be prepared because things are going to be happening, happening and changing. Make sure your home is ready and full of love and that you and your family are all you can control is what's in your domicile <laughs> and around you at the time. So make sure you're prepared for anything to go down at any time. Have plans in place and 
be adaptive, be receptive to change, but the change you want. If it's a change that makes you feel like the world's moving in a bad direction, don't follow suit. Continue to be your authentic self and stand your ground. But don't be afraid of things just because it's different at the same time. Horned cactus, resourcefulness. We are going to have to be resourcefulness, resourceful with water. I really am feeling something about water, and I'm getting a lot of fire here. A lot of wildfires. I don't know if this means we're having droughts. got the turtle here with the ocean something could be going down with the ocean here I think oh we need to be worrying about conversion water conversion on how we can make seawater effective drinking water because at the end of the day I think what they're getting at, at, at is either we're going to run out of natural water resources that is safe to drink or in specific areas, um, they only are going to have seawater to drink if they want to survive. And I feel like we can also use salt water for electricity. But at the same time, is that just going to be using up another resource? Are we putting ourselves in another hole? And again, our planet is majority water. Maybe Spirit is saying, if your planet is majority water, perhaps you should be leaning on the water as your source to power it. Lean on the one thing you have the most of to build the most of what you want as far as drinking water, energy. We need to know in this deck. Beloved and closing door. Yeah, I really feel like a lot of those couples are coming together for the future. Like I said, this is happening in like all over the world. I don't really feel like it's only 144,000, but it could be because that number repeats in many different customs. But at the end of the day, partnerships are coming together so that babies can be made because these babies are going to be growing up to be the leaders that save the others because of what we're teaching them and what your kids will be teaching their kids. Yeah, because this way of life that we know now, it's ending. All the crutches that we've been leaning on, ending. Safety, health, everything's going to be changing. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be wiped out as a species. It just means that for a couple, like think about when all these horrible things have happened. Has human beings been wiped out? No, but they have struggled for a few generations to get back up and running. So... This is going to be another point in history of human survival, of how we had to overcome something horrific, and I feel like a lot of bad things are going to happen, and this is about rebuilding and us coming back. We always come back, and it's because of these contingencies that Spirit puts out by these couples coming together, and they have a purpose. So not only are they making babies to teach them, while they're teaching their babies and raising their kids, they're affecting their community and their world, teaching those people. Like the, These are kind of like earth angels. Spiritual people to me are earth angels. You are given a gift from God. You are a, a being on earth without your wings yet. When you die, you get your wings back. Or maybe we always have wings. We just can't see them because we're alive. <laughs> I don't know. But it's like... You have a divine purpose. You went to heaven and you died and God said this is what I need you to do and you accepted it as your mission and you came here to do it. Whether you know what it is now or not, you, you made that promise to God and you are going to uphold it. 
a tidy house. This is getting your getting your ducks in a row. Prepare mode. We are the preparers. We are the ones to get ready for the doom. That is very much the responsibility of how many are going to survive. It's a big fucking job and we need to take it seriously. Whether you are a big fish or a small fish in this category of couples, whatever you are pulled to do, fucking do it. It's time. It's time to get your houses in order to understand the truth of what is going on in this world. Shit is going to hit the fan. Do not trust what you see and what you hear. Only what you feel in your sixth sense, in your third eye. Look with your spiritual eye at your politicians, at celebrities, at musicians, at anyone in front of you who's seemingly important with something to say or is supposed to represent or be in a position of power or govern in some way. In the hand, the universe is your partner. The burning bush, if you believe, whatever your light source is, that is your truth, your morality, your spirituality. Follow it to the letter. I will say it. We are in the end of times. Does that mean the end of all times? No. It's just a new chapter for humanity. But a big one. A big one. How can I describe this? It's a big jump. Like... World War, the day, the last day of World War Two. To, like that party. <gasps> I knew that was gonna happen. Sorry, one second. My cat just spilled my drink. <laughs> Sorry about that. They're naughty. <laughs> um, so, like a jump in history would be like from going, from. Like I said, the last day of World War II. Kitty! What is wrong with you? <laughs> she worked for the Watchers? I don't know. She's not letting this message come out. But, like the last day of World War II, that party of everybody, woo, to jump to the man, first man on the moon. You know? Neil Armstrong. One giant step far. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like... It could be an advancement, and we're going completely technical, and like alien-esque, as in flying cars or some shit, or it could be a doom and gloom situation, and I feel like it's the, the lather because, uh, the lather, the ladder, because, <laughs> excuse me, I need to go to sleep soon, but yeah, I think fate is also in our hands, is what Spirit is saying. I don't really feel like it's been decided whether we're going to get a spank or if we're going to get uplifted. I think we're still being tested, if that makes sense. So I feel like if it was definitely something solidified, I would have had crystal images that repeat. And I feel like a lot of other visionaries would too, instead of just getting like snippets of possible outcomes, if that makes sense. Or at least that's what I'm taking it as, because I, again, oh, there it is. Don't really know what is going on or which way it will go. I can only feel that it's not good at this point in time. The way, the direction we're going in right now is, like, if it was a meter on what, all right, the door's going to close either way. That's already been decided. But what we're opening the door to has not been decided. So, it's 
like we're approaching the door being tested and God's gonna be deciding soon on what that other side is gonna be and I think this is a wake-up call if I have ever heard one act now or forever hold or speak now or forever hold your peace act now or forever solidify your fate either we work together either we change or we keep beating a dead horse and, and, you know, bickering and fighting and getting more angry. Do you want doom? Or do you want victory? Collectively. Not just you. Like, we need to be working and thinking as a unit. Not separate individual parties or sides anymore. That is what is destroying us. We're dividing into halves and then halves and then halves of that until we're just twos over here and twos over here. I don't really feel like that's a success story for anyone. Yes, we need to cleanse a lot of anger and bitterness and resentment about history, about how things are going. Um, we need to cleanse leaders and organizations and put our foot down on what we will tolerate and what they've been overstepping on and what kind of future we want because we're either going to continue to fight each other and fail or we're going to have to learn to work together to succeed which way are we going we, if this is to me is like wave the white flag bury the hatchet and decide or we're warring and the war doesn't stop until one side wins. We have gift and knowledge. This is what all of us are as visionaries, people, light workers, these couples that are coming together. You are given the gift as being parents. Like I said, you're given the gift as being the teacher of the future leader. You are going to birth somebody who is going to save a lot of lives and be important. It is a gift to not only be that person's parent, but for God to say you are the one that's worthy of teaching them. So you need to cleanse. You need to be better than the world and all around you. Because you have something important to do that's going to have to save all of their kids too. This is what you, this, I don't care if you think this is ridiculous, if this is hitting home to you, prepare for that child. That child is everything, everything to the world. I don't care what you got going on in your life or what you do. Do you see all these lights in the sky representing a soul that your child will save for the knowledge you teach them about what is coming? Whether you teach them to be a spiritual guru, to guide the next evolution of spirituality, or you teach your child to be a doctor, like I said, who works in the dark with no power. So when all these other doctors are in a panic because they have spent most of their life with technology, your kid is calm, centered, shows them how to do it. You got this, remember? We all had to do this with our hands in medical school before you could learn. You have the capability of doing it. Just being that calm voice of reason and having that confidence. All those doctors are going to be watching your child know what to do in the situation that I, they are going to be called to do. Your child is everything. That's why you're here. Even if you have a great purpose, even if you are a successful, famous, whatever, you're here for this kid. Whether this kid is already here. You might even have more. More than one. I just feel like you know. When this kid is born or was born. Even if you have other kids. I'm not saying you have favorites. But there's a feeling. This one is special. And I know that every parent feels that about the their kid but that's not what I'm talking about this is a spiritual sense of I need to I need to protect this one it's usually the, my kid is very sensitive that natural 
like the parents who know their kids really sensitive and like will say something like please don't say that around my kid they take that to heart that know their kid enough you have that sense that instinct to voice it and be that mother hen you're that mother hen for a reason that kid needs you to be that mother hen because it's more sensitive than other kids because it has a spiritual gift because it has a spiritual purpose I was such a, a sensitive kid I would cry like that if you were mean to me I took it to heart like what why are you mad at me <laughs> and when when somebody got mad at me I would feel that in myself and I couldn't understand that it was their anger and not that I had done something wrong and a little kid who's an empath will feel that and not know what that is and it can be very damaging so protect your sensitive babies they usually love critters. <laughs> There's, you know you have a psychic kid if they have like a unique bond with animals or just people in general. Just like your kid's a baby, they will like come from across the room like your baby's like a fucking beacon. Not even speaking yet and these people are flacking to your baby. <laughs> or they're a little kid and like they... Just walk up to someone and hug them randomly or they always seem to know what to say or be sweet like giving helping people like that's a little earth angel you have a little earth angel baby <laughs> I love that's why I love kids because they don't know to hide their angelness they know not what they are they're these little I mean they're not a hundred percent innocent because you know, babies do sinful stuff. They will hit you. They will smack you in your face. They will lie to you. Did you eat that? No. Uh-uh. Yeah, you did. <laughs> They're not without sin. <laughs> but it's mostly funny. Because <laughs> they, like, kids can't lie good. But, but I, char like, my, my baby sister, I use this all the time. But she, like, terrible twos. Her daughter's about to be terrible two. And, well, now she just turned one. But. I feel like she's ahead of the game. She's terrible ones <laughs> getting into food like that. She got into the chocolate drawer, chocolate all over her face, like all over. Like she clearly didn't know. She had chocolate on her face too, you know. You're not going to harp them too hard. I was like, Danielle, did you eat the chocolate? She's like, wouldn't say no. <laughs> Just kept shaking her head. I'm like, Danielle. Did you eat the chocolate? Danielle, are you lying? Yes. <laughs> like, they can't do it. And they might keep it going, but they can't keep a straight face. Like, they don't know how to properly sin, so it's cute. <laughs> are you lying to me? You're lying. They're like, fuck. <laughs> They're as a kid also supposed to test you but you are supposed to correct them too. you can't just be like okay cute face you lied about the chocolate over your face it's like lying is bad <laughs> like learn it and so they don't you know grow up to be Meghan Markle's but anyway <laughs> um this also talks about your inner child as well like, I think a lot of people's anger and unrest comes from stuff that happened to them when they were a kid. Either something um, they felt like maybe they had a talent and they're bitter because somebody made them feel like they weren't special. Or nobody made them, gave them a leg up or... Um, Like, you could be a parent now and have kids, and maybe you had really horrible parents, and you look at your kid, and you're like, how could you not want to take care of me, or how could you have treated me that way? And I think a lot of people are angry about that when they, like, lash out about teachers or stuff in their community. It really comes from some kind of hurt in the past, either uh, something, someone put them in a... a a situation with racism so they get extra sensitive about racism around them like triggers so by healing the past will help you react calmer 
and help dead racism in the future by not clinging, by cleansing the pain from the past. I'm not just saying just about racism. I was just using that as an example because it's also um, a trending topic, unfortunately. But, yeah, I think a lot of us need to step away from... Um, Wanting to be like other people, being in people's fan clubs, idolizing people. Um, this is about being your authentic self, branding yourself the way you want. You know, um, it's always happened in any, uh, any generation. Like my generation, it was magazines and TV because we didn't have the internet as much, you know, we wore what we saw in those, or we we said slang words by what we heard on TV, and like everybody's influenced about the world around them, and we really need to step away from that, and just be your authentic self, and brand yourself, and not look to leadership or celebrities to represent you, or your opinions, or your voice, because remember what I said, open those third eyes, you're going to start seeing the truth about what is going down in the world and how they really manipulate and influence in a lot of negative ways. I'm not saying all oh, music is bad or all oh, movies are all just what makes you feel angry, what incites your rage or makes you feel stressed out or just adds more to your plate. These things shouldn't, you know, oh, it's just a story, but you're adding fuel to the fire. Your your people are watching this and going out and acting like the shit is real. You know what I mean? So you're you're adding fuel to a hate filled world, and we we need more puff pieces and happy news, and not murder she wrote and you know true crime. Like I'm the first to love true crime stories, but look at how much true crime is out there. Because the world is getting more vicious. <laughs> we should have less true crime stories to listen to and not more. And that in itself is just an, an example of how disgusting we are turning because we are disconnecting as we are human beings with flesh and feelings and souls. And we're not just voices behind a screen or faces behind a screen. And we're not just these fake lives that you put up on profiles like... I very much care about my image I, in a professional way, and I very much try to brand myself just like anybody else. Like, oh my god. Wow, I've never got that. I got low disk space. I need to free up some space. So I'm going to end this here, but just be yourself and be authentic to you. Find your own fashion, find your own likes, find your own political stances, don't follow movements, um, don't, unless you feel called to, like if you are like, yes, like me, I'm pro-choice, I feel like that's the right direction for me, I'm following that, I'm not saying don't be an activist or don't follow politics, I'm just saying trust your third eye, if somebody feels off, they're off, if something doesn't feel right, don't go, spirit is trying to help you see the trap before you walk into it, because there is a lot of traps being set, don't fall for it, be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. That should be your motto from here on out and prepare those babies, either the ones you have now or will currently have. Because if this jived with you, if this is hitting home, you are one of the people being called to do this. I wasn't expecting to do a spiritual reading, but this is what came out and I hope you liked it. I'll see you all again soon. Love and light. Bye.